this video, I want to talk about and do a comparison of the AccuMeasure 3000 with a DEXA scan using my own physique. So in this video, you'll get the comparison and I'll show you also how to use the AccuMeasure 3000. So as it stands right now, I am two days out from stepping on the stage for a fitness model competition. It's going to be my first ever fitness model competition. Super pumped, super excited. What I do is I like to measure stuff. I love numbers. So I've measured myself and I've been measuring myself consistently with the AccuMeasure 3000 for a number of years. And I also get DEXA scans and I use tape measures and I like all that kind of stuff and the bathroom scales all together so I know what's going on. So you may be familiar with the AccuMeasure 3000, I'm not gonna bore you with it, it's just a pinch an inch piece of equipment that you can buy off Amazon for 10, 15, 20 bucks. And you know, when you use this though, make sure that you keep all the variables the same. You know, if you're measuring usually midweek, so if you've had cheat meals the night before, it's not a good idea to use this the day after because you might be retaining water and the accuracy of this will even will, will just go out the window. So I usually pick Wednesday morning to do my measurements. First thing, wake up in the morning, get the accu measure before I go to the gym. That's important as well. So make sure you don't use this before, uh, don't, make, don't use this after you go to the gym. Make sure you use it before you go to the gym. And, um, yeah, and just use it all the time and get used to using it. So I'm gonna show you how to use it and then I'm gonna do the comparisons to a DEXA scan that I, I had done a, a few hours ago. So I'm gonna drop the camera down so you can see me use it. Now, this is pretty much it. You know, there's nothing to it. When you buy this off Amazon, it comes with a chart for men and for women. And so uh, you can read the doc. I suggest you read the documentation, otherwise I'm just repeating myself. So what we're doing, is the Super Iliac site. Easiest way to find it is I usually just go around in line with the belly button and I usually go for this area around here, right? And you just take a generous amount of skin and obviously under the skin, you've got the fat, which is above the muscle, right? And that's what we're grabbing as such, yeah? And you grab it on an angle. So rather than grabbing it like this, grab it like this. On an angle. And so you take your caliper, yeah, move the slider to the other side, and then take a piece of skin, pinch a piece of skin, approximately align with your belly button. And so here we click, you stop six millimeters. Do it again. Click, six millimeters. Do several of these and you can take an average. That's what I do. I might even take it from a slightly different angle. Click, six millimeters. Might go this way a little bit. Six, just over six millimeters. So pretty comfortable. I've been doing this for years. So I know two, four, six, that's eight millimeters. No, two, four, six, seven millimeters. Seven millimeters. Six millimeters. If it will go up a little higher and see what happens. Just under six millimeters. You see how it varies a little bit when we move away from the super relaxed site, just over six millimeters. We'll just go over here. I'll go somewhere completely random. Five millimeters. What if we go over here? Five millimeters. So what I'm now, I'm just kind of picking random places now and you see the difference. Just under six. All right, what if we just go over here? There's a big piece of fat skin there. Eight millimeters, right? Obviously I'm just around, but this is the right hand side of the body on an angle, super iliac side, in line with the belly button, about an inch, inch and a half above your, your hip bone. It's gonna be around here, yeah? And when you hear a click, you're gonna stop applying the force. The force. Six millimeters. So you get the idea. So six millimeters, take it to the chart, it's 9% body fat for some a guy my age. 
and take several, and then you can do the average of five measurements or six measurements. And what else is there? Actually, I forgot to mention. I'll point this camera back down again. So usually, a lot of guys measure like this. Usually just take it on an angle, and so you, your skin fold is kind of on an angle downwards. You know, so you kind of get your obliques, it kind of runs downwards. So you just go on an angle like that. And if you're like, oh, is it here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here? Look, ultimately, it's the superiliac side. It's not gonna be perfect. This is not gonna be a perfect measurement anyway. So you can do one measurement here, one here, one here, one here, and just take the average. It's a lot easier than just trying to find out the precise, I spent a long time trying to figure out where is the exact location of the superiliac, one inch above the hip. So anyway, and a lot of people say, well, this is inaccurate. It is, of course. Every, every measurement device is inaccurate to a certain extent. DEXA, D-E-X-A, DEXA scans are the gold standard of measuring devices. So but you pay for that, you know, 70, 80, 90 bucks for a DEXA scan. Uh, and that'll tell you exactly what's going on, how much muscle you have or don't have, how much you've lost or gained in terms of fat and so forth, uh, bone density as well. Um, but I use AccuMeasure, so to give you contrast, I um, you know, will use a DEXA scan before I start a cut or a bulk and after I finish a cut or a bulk. So I know what my body fat percentage has done and what my lean mass has done, whether I lost some lean mass, gained some lean mass, and then in between that, I'll use the AccuMeasure once a week. As I said, I pick a Wednesday because, you know, if I'm having a refeed or something like that on a Sunday, I don't want the Monday measurements to be affected by that. Or if I have a little bit more sodium in a cheat meal, um, then I don't want my caliper results to get thrown out. So I usually pick middle of the week. And when you're buying one of these, there's actually a guy on YouTube who talks about uh, that there are fake replicas of these, which are not the genuine AccuMeasure ones that you buy. So maybe watch that video, check out his video, and, and it'll show you how to tell the difference between, if you have a look, there's markings on the back of this. If it's a copy, then it won't have that, it won't have those markings on the back of caliper. So mine has markings on US patent number made in the USA. So this is a genuine caliper, whatever. I just thought I'd put it out there. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, you can always reach me directly. And yeah, otherwise I'll show you my DEX results now. Uh, once again, you can see my DEX results. Uh, the leaner you get, the more inaccurate this becomes. And the greater the body fat that you have on your body, the less accurate this becomes. So if you're anything, for a guy usually over 20% body fat, um, this actually becomes more and more inaccurate even if you're measuring you know, the same caliper, the same location, the same person doing the testing. Um, and that's in my experience anyway. So if you're sort of like 20-25% body fat as a guy, maybe go to a tape measure. And like if you're a beast, you want to be using tape measures. You know, you don't want to be using this. It doesn't, it's not accurate. Um, and if you're really lean, like sort of sub 10 for a guy, then this also becomes increasingly more inaccurate. Um, what else is there? Now, actually, before I forget, there's a chart, which is a guide only. Now, if you're watching this, you're looking at, well, what body fat percentage should I aim for to get shredded? Now, for a guy, you know, shredded is like usually sub 10% my phone's ringing, sub 10% body fat, but it depends on how much muscle you have. Um, so you might look at me, and you might have more muscle on your frame compared to me at 8.3% body fat. So I'll throw up a chart on your screen for men and then I'll show one for women. This, these charts you'll see online should only be a guide only, like this. Like, you can look at that as a woman and go, 17%, I look nothing like that. Um, because, you know, the woman in the chart might have more muscle than you, or you might have more muscle than her. So you should only use these charts as a guide only. So um, usually for guys, abs start to show up around 10 to 14%, depending on how much muscle you have, you know, on your body. That's the honest truth. Uh, there are guys that get down to 9, 10%. They're lean, but they're skinny. Like they don't have really any muscle. So they'd be 9, 10%. And 
there's no abs, or the abs are very, um, they're not very well defined. Whereas a guy who's bulked properly, cut, bulked a few times, bulk, cut, bulk, cut, uh, usually, you know, 10, 14, 10, 15%, even 15, but like, you know, the high depends on, again, how much muscle, but um, we'll have more and more of his abs showing at a higher and higher body fat percentage because he has more muscular development under his fat layer. Um, now in terms of like, I'll show you my physique real quick. Now I'm two days out from a fitness model competition, I step on the stage. So obviously I'm beginning leaner than this and I'm not doing dehydration, I'm not doing sodium manipulation or anything like that. Just I'm just doing a natural competition. So you'll see that, I mean, you can see that, I'm just gonna give you a demonstration. But here's the serratus, these are the serratus muscles here, which are the finger-like muscles that run in between the rib bones. Now these serratus muscles, these serratus muscles, you can maybe see a couple of them, um, they usually show up at around sub 10% for guys, usually, not always, but I mean, never really do you see guys have the serratus muscles above, above 10%. And um, yeah, so that's, that's where I'm at. I want to mention, but yeah. Um, but so this is for this amount of muscle as a natural weightlifter. Uh, never taken any chemicals in my life, and I'm proud of that. I have nothing against people that do. Just a personal choice. Um, you know, this is pretty much hard work over the last few years of training. Um, yeah, so 8.3%. And uh, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in another video.